The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, live in studio, waiting to take your calls on whatever is going on with your health. <clears throat> Give me a call. Perhaps you've had a problem. You've done all kinds of things to free it up and it doesn't work, right? Well, here's an opportunity. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. Have a couple of things that we want to talk about, but first, obviously, we want to congratulate the Washington Nationals. But why I want to do a segue into that is guess who saved the day? It's called chiropractic. Scherzer finished the, the game because of chiropractic, and I want to salute that. Obviously, those of you listening to me for years know that part of what we do is chiropractic, and it has a major impact in sports. The Nationals have that opportunity, and it did it. It did it for them, and wow, we have a World Series winning team because of it. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. We're going to talk about pain. Isn't that an interesting situation? We'll get into it a couple of different ways. You know, pain is one of those things that stops everyone. You know, you put up with it, you drug it. You know, we talked a little bit about opioid uh, problems over the past several weeks, but I want to get into what really happens and why sometimes pain reoccurs, revisits, comes back no matter what you do. You think you got it gone, and then you do something that you normally are able to do, and then it shows up all over again. Well, when we look at anything that happens in the body, you have to look at what the why behind it. And the why simply is, was there an injury, whether it's significant or you know something that was very mild? You went to the dentist, and he put a, a filling, a crown, or a cap in your mouth, and he didn't get the normal juxtaposition, the normal... Uh, elevation of the temporal mandibular joint, the TMJ neutral. So now you're going to have a lot of stress pattern, if you will, the 22 bones that make up your head. We're going to talk about that a little bit because it's really important. Biochemistry, bioelectrical, all the things that you're exposed to outside in, the things that you eat you shouldn't be eating, the things that you need more of that you don't get enough of, things of that nature that you know, have a direct physiological input into your body's ability to function. It's like putting the wrong gasoline in in your car. If it's not good stuff, you're not going anywhere. You're going to sputter and sprout and you're going to shut down. In today's world, electrical, all of us have cell phones. All of us have uh, you know computers that we either are on all the time or we see periodically. But even if we're not, we're bombarded, particularly if you're living in the greater Washington metropolitan area, you're living in electrical soup. And God forbid now with, you know, the 5G networks that are coming out there, it's going to be worse. Look up the ramifications. I think you're going to be not only surprised, but you're going to be scared to death. There's going to be a lot of shifting that's going to occur physiologically. And the third is stress, emotional patterns. So all of these things affect how the body functions optimally. But what does that got to do with pain? You know, pain can be broken down into categories of thermal pain and biochemical pain and mechanical pain. So when we start picking it apart and we start looking at this craziness, this situation of pain, why does it reoccur? Why do we take something and it should knock out the inflammation? Why do we break the pain cycle and then it comes back? You've all experienced it. You know, sometimes it's it's short lived, and you know, other times it's just there under under the surface. You're always feeling it, and it just it's uncomfortable. As long as you don't do X, you name the situation, it doesn't flare up and bite you. But you're giving up your life, right? So. We know in many cases exactly what's causing the problems, and sometimes we've got to go way back. We've got to go back decades, you know, for those of us who are later on in, in our lifespan and find out what happened many years ago. You know, nevertheless, it's unpleasant. It's minimally unpleasant. It can affect everything. It affects our relationships. It affects our moods. It affects how we interact with life on a day-to-day -day basis, and it forces us to do things differently. You know, we give things up, and that's not okay. And it's due to this thing called PAIN, pain. You know, pain is so pervasive that it's one of the major considerations 
in identifying one's overall health and well-being. If you take uh, a health evaluation test, you're going to see a lot of different questions about pain, whether it's significant and in, in what you know. Then it's going to divide it up into: is it sharp? Is it is it dull? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it pressure-like? And those are the things that you know we ask when a patient comes in our office. But there's something that you may not have considered. It's just because you're not in pain, the injuries and the experiences that you've had that caused the pain in the past, you know, have healed. It doesn't mean that they're no longer having an effect on your body. They're still there. They're still triggering stuff. In fact, old pain patterns, old injuries may be causing a broad spectrum of all kinds of problems systemically that you would never consider being related to what happened way back in the day. And so you really have to understand this. So let's kind of walk our way through that and what it really means neurologically to the body. Remember, your body is nothing more than an energetic platform, a neurological uh, system that reports incoming and outgoing and allows you to mechanically work the way it's supposed to, right? So when we talk about nociception, that's a big word, right? So nociception, nociceptors, perception of those things, that's basically, you know, a, a process of uh, subconsciously, consciously translating the types of pain and the discomfort. These signals are generated by these nerve receptors, these nociceptors, okay? And they have these little endings. That's all that means. They, they, they're peripheral receptors and they're central receptors, and they interpret what the pain means to your body. But unfortunately, when you have these, these processes, the body begins to act differently. So, Let's kind of take them apart a little bit because I want you to understand that you don't have to put up with what you're putting up with. You know, these phantom pains, these recidivistic patterns that keep showing up. You go to the doc, they're not sure what it is. Take these, whatever it is, and we'll see how it goes a month from now or two months or three months or whatever it is. So if you got pain and you want to talk about it today, it's 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Let's talk about it. You know, you got a tooth that's throbbing, just doesn't go away. Doc can't find it out. You have something that hurts and they can't figure out what that's all about. Well, there's a real a pathway to really understanding it. So we said there's three different types of stimulus in the body. You know, so we have pressure and then we have thermal, you know, and then we have, you know, things that uh, actually involve inflammation or swelling. And the highest concentration of all these receptors that interpret this are on the surface of the skin. So you can actually get sensitivities and these dermatones, meaning the area that the pain goes to. And it, if you understand them, it can tell you where they're coming from. And if you really understand the matrix and going back through it, you'll find out what the type of pain is and where it's coming from. But the brain is the interpreting organ system. It's the one that really puts the fire out. So guess what happened with the World Series, right? So here's Scherzer, and he's all locked up. His lower portion of his neck, his neck and shoulders, he can't raise his arm. And there's nothing that they could do traditionally to allow that to free up so he could begin to do what he needs to do. So these nociceptors that were firing we're causing a loop that causes the muscles to tighten up and not let go. And then what happened is the lower portion of the vertebrae, the spine, and the, started locking in position. There was no normal motion. And one thing began to move on the other. So he couldn't pitch. He couldn't do what he was meant to do. So when you can go in and you can break that cycle, but break it properly, all of a sudden, function begins to return. Now, I'll say this, you know, and I haven't had the opportunity or the privilege of being able to examine him, but he's not done with treatment. He's got to go in now and continue doing what he's doing so that loop doesn't reset itself and he doesn't continue to have problems with it. We, you know, whether you're a golfer or you're a tennis player or you, you know, you <clears throat> play a little racquetball or some type of pickup game. And, you know, you start backing off. You don't swing quite as much. You don't react quite as quickly. It's because you know that if you do, there's this thing that's underlying that's going to cause you more discomfort. Well, you have to understand that there's a recidivistic pattern. There's a triggering mechanism 
that has caused that, and it's it's making it return. Why didn't it just go away? Why didn't when I took the painkiller? Why when I took the muscle relaxer? Why didn't when I took the anti-inflammatory? Why wasn't that enough to get rid of the problem? And then we kind of limp along and we put up with it for a long period of time. And that pain pattern begins to affect other portions within the nervous system in the brain. So we look at those responses further on down the line as sometimes where did they come from? But if we go back to the original trigger, we begin to get an understanding that all of a sudden that breathing, that wheezing, that coughing, and nobody can figure out where it's coming from, may have come from that original injury. Or all of a sudden our uh, intestinal tract, we start getting constipated or the re reverse, you know, we're running to the bathroom on a regular basis. There's a recidivistic pattern that now may be causing what we call a visceral response. And that's part of how the nervous system begins to create further downstream effects. Again, part of that pain pattern that started out because of whatever it was. But wait, you know, there's a whole lot more to this thing. There's a lot more that's going on in setting pain and understanding where it's coming from. But more importantly, finally getting it to resolve itself and making it go away. It's important that we, we understand and we walk through because traditionally, guess what's happening? You're not being treated the way you need to be treated to break the pain cycle. There's ways of making that take place. There are secondary effects to this neurological trip that we're talking about, and it involves the brain and the brain's interpretation of this. It resets itself into the upper portions of sensory areas of the brain and the motion portion of the brain and so forth. And once it gets there, once it locks itself in, it's you pay a price if you don't know it's there and how to reset that system and how to get rid of it. You can't just treat where the pain was, the shoulder, the knee, the head, whatever it was. But you have to understand what pathway is being affected. And there's very few people that are out there in the health fields that really understand the mechanics because everything is being treated locally. You go to a PT and they're going to do you know, we call it rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, but, you know, they're doing range of motion and they're doing myofascial stripping and they're doing some ultrasound and so forth. But the pain never really fully goes away because the trigger that's now in the brain itself hasn't been dealt with successfully. As we get into the program today, we're going to talk a little bit about that because I really need to understand that so you can ask the right questions. So you really can go to the doc and say, hey, listen, are we treating the right, right area? So even when the pain is gone, you know, you're walking, you're talking, you're gesturing, you're functioning, which you feel like is a really normal situation without pain. It's all good, right? Well, not really, because there's other things that now start showing up. Unfortunately, you know, if we don't understand the loop, if we don't understand where it's coming from, we can't fix other things that are going to take place further downstream. We're going to talk a lot about that today. But meanwhile, give me a call. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Let me walk you through your pain pattern and see if we can get a little understanding so you can do something about it, so you can ask the right questions. That's why we're here. That's why we do this radio program. We're coming up to our break. Don't go away. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live. And if you're in your car or got a cell phone, call me. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizal here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. I am in studio, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. Got an interesting topic. We're talking about pain. You know, pain that sometimes doesn't go away, but pain that goes away, but then causes other problems as time goes on. That triggering mechanism that, you know, what's happening with this organ system relationship or whatever. People have a, a fall, a car accident, and, you know, the soreness kind of abates, but all of a sudden they've got something else. Well, that's the pattern that we're talking about. Many of you know that I was the uh, chairman of the International College of Applied Kinesiology for many years. 
and eight and you know the the best thing and the the worst thing of being in charge of a professional organization of about 3600 members is that it's the first day you say yes and you think you can do everything and it's the last day that you walk out and you say thank you very much it's been a journey <laughs> and so that journey is one that actually has allowed us to grow exponentially but this pain pattern uh, the International College of Applied Kinesiology uh, that was developed by a brilliant doctor by the name of Dr. George Goodhart uh, developed this relationship between uh, muscle function and organ systems. And it's just a feedback loop that occurs within the nervous system itself. So and the organ systems can cause muscle dysfunction. The, the uh, uh, vice versa is uh, true as well. So we're going to touch on that as we talk about a little concept called injury recall that was developed by a podiatrist by the name of uh, Robert Crody. And it's injury recalling the injury to reset the problem to really get rid of it. Before we do that, we're going to go to the phones. Alice, thank you for calling. How can I help you? Yes, I wanted to ask about um, hip pain. I was born with a subluxated hip. Okay. Which means, you know, it was right. my hip was dislocated right. and as I grew of course the the hip socket is just kind of straight. It doesn't curl curl around the, the ball like it's supposed to. So now I'm sixty five and past decade or two it's been, you know, having a lot of hip pain because now it's just like bone on bone and so anyway, I so I know where my pain comes from and of course it does radiate, it affects my knee and things sure. like that, but I know it originates from my hip. But sure. Is there anything, any supplements or anything that are good for pain? Well, there's a lot of different things that you can do for pain, but you have to find out the mechanics of the entire mechanism. So you have, you know, a lot of people are born genetically with a shallow hip socket and, yeah. you know, wear and tear over a period of time because of abnormal mechanics. So let's take it from uh, kind of a different point of view. Okay. Somebody uh, has a an injury when they're young and it, it distorts the pelvis. Somebody, uh, you know, is in a, a job that habitually puts their body in a mechanical stress pattern. So it's not just affecting one joint space. It's going to affect a lot of things. Now, there are people who have, I'll go back to what I said originally with a shallow hip socket, uh, that never have a problem if the mechanics are maintained and are neutralized over a period of time. And you can do that from uh, doing things like yoga and Pilates and the gentle things that allow the body to maintain its normal congruity. Or, you know, you get good chiropractic care or uh, osteopathic care that, you know, in the old days when they actually did some structural manipulation. And if you maintain that, that abnormal mechanical pattern that uh, you sustained when you had that subluxation or that dislocation at birth, uh, mm -hmm neutralizes and you never really experience a problem. Now, once it's there, the first thing that you, you want to look at is, is there anything mechanically that can be done first to put it into a neutral position for you and then add the chemistry on top of it, meaning nutritional pieces that may make a difference. So you have to look at inflammatory pathways. Any joint in the body will degenerate, will break down very quickly in the presence of acid, meaning an acidic environment, things that we eat. Just my mantra uh, is touching the surface. Sugar, sodas, coffee, black teas, fast food, fried foods, alcohol, gluten additives, preservatives, GMO products, and so forth. All those are highly irritating to the body and then they cause the body to be acidic. So what happens in acidity? You end up with degeneration. So little problems at that point become big problems and you begin to, you know, uh, experience discomfort, inflammation, pain patterns, and so forth. So the first thing you look at is mechanically, what's going on? Secondly, biochemically, what's the state of the terrain of the body? Is it more of an alkaline? Is it very supportive? Are you getting nutrients the way you're supposed to? So one is going to compound upon the other. So you put it together. So in you know our practice, where somebody comes in, we're going to look at uh, everything from you know the nutritional pathways. We're going to look at things uh, you know biomechanically, uh, and there's some patients that have gone to the place where the joint is you know irreparable. Then they need a little bit more, and in those situations, uh, we'll do some regenerative medicine. We'll do uh, our doctor uh, that works with us. Uh, will do some stem cell, and that helps dramatically. But you still have to keep the mechanics. Uh, in a in a good place and the chemistry in a good place for even that to work optimally. You, you can't just say, oh, here's the magic pill and it works. It doesn't work that way. So right. 
the, the short ends, yeah, there's things like NAD um, that can help uh, dumb down the pain patterns. There's all the glucosamines, the sulfate, glucosamine sulfates, the MSNs. Uh, those are all things that will help regenerate any joint. But, you, but inflammatory reactions usually start within the intestinal environment. You have to make sure that the gut is working well. You have to make sure you're drinking enough alkaline water. Generally, a rule of thumb is whatever your body weight is, divide it in half, and that's the number of ounces per day you should drink in water. And to is, get, that, is that just pure water or would it count with like tea? Or no, uh-uh, like that? that actually makes it worse. So for every cup of caffeinated anything that you have, you well, inc- green tea. Green tea. Gr- green tea is still caffeinated. It's alkalizing. It's really good, yeah. um, but it's also a, a, a caffeinated product, so it's going to decrease your water. But you know, even if you got, I'm making numbers up. Let's say somebody weighs 140 pounds. You know, so we're talking about you know 75 and in that neighborhood, 70. That's really where you should be. You know, I'll tell you what. I'd like to cover that just a little bit more because the the topic that you're talking about really affects everyone when it comes to pain patterns. So if you'll hold, we got a break coming up. You'll stay on the line. I want to come back and ask you a couple more questions, and then I'll give you a, a, an answer that may be productive for you. So don't go away. We're coming up to a break. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live. A lot of you are downtown celebrating the Nats. Good for you. We'll be right back. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM, WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Congratulations, Washington Nationals. Again, chiropractic saved the day. We fixed Scherzer. He's back. He's good. But he's got more treatment to do. You know why? Because that pain pattern can come back and keep biting you. It's a recidivistic pattern. We're going to talk about injury recall and injury recall technique. And as I said uh, before the break, a guy by the name of Robert Crotty, who's a podiatrist, he actually came up with it. And he and his colleague, Gordon Bronston, uh, it's a very interesting process, but we want to get back to the phones. Alice, you still there? Yes. Thank you for holding. So, you know, uh, just to, to recap, Alice has got uh, a problem from the time she was born. She had a dislocated hip, and so she's got wear and tear, and now she's in her sixth decade, and she's got a pain pattern that's showing up and degenerative changes that are occurring because of it. So, Alice, what happens, again, is over time, if the mechanics of the body have to adapt abnormally, you put more of a stress on the pattern. If the, if the mechanics are maintained, you have a much greater chance of going through your entire life without any uh, problems. And you see with all kinds of athletes, you know, whether they're uh, football players, baseball players, hockey, lacrosse, doesn't matter. Uh, the the me- biomechanics of the body have to be maintained in an equilibrium. If it does, then the chances of injury causing joint space degeneration over time is minimized. But then you look at what we talked about just a little bit with uh, inflammatory reactions as well. If the body is inflamed, meaning acid. So anytime you hear the word inflammation, think acidic and the you know vice versa so uh, if we're putting things into our body that are highly acidic if we're under stress patterns on a constant basis that will increase the inflammatory acidic you know uh, paradigm so in your situation and your question is what can you take it's not that simple it's one of making sure that the mechanical patterns are normalized. And then even if you put nutritional patterns in, and we mentioned some of the things, in, there's proteolytic enzymes, which are uh, things like amylases and proteases and, and the like that will help keep the inflammatory reactions down and actually begin to help repair. Uh, in today's world, everybody, you know, uh, is, is trying to find those natural pieces, and there's many of them. Your fight-flight system, your adrenal system is critical in how we repair everything from ligaments to tendons to joint spaces. That's that small little ductless gland that sits on top of the kidneys, and it puts out huge numbers of your own steroids. But when it's stressed, when it goes into hypofunction, the body doesn't produce it at the level that can support you adequately. So you have to be, begin to repair systems. So I don't know your, you know, your health. I don't know uh, enough about you to guide you. But you know, to answer your first question, uh, you want to make sure that the body is breaking things down. You have to make sure the digestive function is normal. Uh, at that age, uh, you're going to not produce as much hydrochloric acid as you did when you were 25 or 30 years old. So foods have a tendency not to be digested properly, so it's going to increase your inflammation. So you want to handle that. Right. You want to make sure that you know, you're know you keeping everything in balance. If you don't uh, have a, a really excellent chiropractor, get one. Call us. Um, 
but you want to do those things. Acupuncture is is fantastic a well, when combined with low energy light laser to to heal joint spaces. But the message I'm trying to get to you is that you have to change multiple things. It's not just as easy as go take this. If you want to take something like that, glucosamine sulfates. Uh, generally, in the the nutrition world, it's a couple thousand milligrams minimum a day for about six to eight weeks. And then you alter the dose accordingly, you can bring it down, uh, adding MSN to it, um, and then using collagen uh, proteins, uh, bulletproof proteins from Whole Foods, Moms, things like that will also add in, in being able to support the system. Does that help a little bit? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Appreciate your call. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. I'd like to talk about your pain and see if we can do something about it. But, you know, at the end of the day, we, we kind of look at everything from a multifaceted point of view when it comes to any situation. First, when did the injury happen? And in this situation, she's got an old injury, something that took place years ago. Could that be what we're talking about with this injury recall pattern? Well, Probably, and it just keeps causing that joint space not to balance properly. So, you know, was there a history of trauma? And that's usually the single most important piece plus the dietary piece. So these two guys, these two podiatrists, Crotty and Bronson, referred to to these uh, patterns as something called muscle chain responses. One muscle feeding into the next, feeding the next. So it's like the knee bone connected to the hip bone, connected to the shoulder bone, you know, things like that, right? So the the original work charted patterns uh, that were very specifically mapped out and related to other things and spots on the body that... uh, the, the, the patient would experience pain and discomfort in. And when they found it, it was, you know, something that now they can do something about. There's a guy in our profession in the world of applied kinesiology by the name of Dr. Walter Schmidt out of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, <clears throat> who went to Dr. Bronston as a result of a foot injury. And Dr. Schmidt couldn't get rid of this thing. And he was limping. And I know him. He's a very personal friend. And couldn't get rid of this thing. But then Dr. Bronston was able to fix it. And obviously, Dr. Schmidt being not only an applied kinesiologist, but a a functional neurologist and chiropractor, took this work and began to apply it systemically to many other situations. So you look at how do we find it, then how do we fix it, and how do we make sure that we reset it? And those are the important keys. Those are the things that we really have to have a full understanding of. You know, Schmidt's concept and need for injury recall technique is that any muscle in the body in the clear, meaning that muscle that is working normally, it's normally facilitated, it's strong. We can use the word strong. It really should be facilitated, is unlocked and does not respond to working on the cells, they're called spindles, within the muscle. And then it suggests that there's an injury pattern present that's not allowing it to normalize. And, you know, whether you you have something that happened as far as an impact injury, uh, you know, something happened to your face, you went to the dentist, uh, you twisted your ankle, all these things are part of it. And then, so subsequently, that recidivistic injury, if you will, continues to show its ugly head. And it has to be turned off at the brain level. And so this injury recall pattern can help identify the original location of the pain and how it took place, the trauma, reset it at that level, and then making sure that it's put back into a normalcy where the body actually can heal and you can fix other things. That's why so many times we go to our therapists, we go to a chiropractor, we go to an osteopath, and these guys know their stuff, but there's an underlying triggering mechanism that they can, can't can seem to resolve, and that's what we're talking about in this thing. If you can find it and identify it and understand there was an original injury that took place, fix that injury first through very light response, reflexive pattern, by the way, then everything else you do after that works perfectly. Eric, thank you for being patient. How can I help you? That's me. Hello. Uh, Hello. Hey, how are you? Great. Great. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, uh, recently, 
Uh, I've been having real bad pain in my elbow on the on the like if I'm looking down at my elbow on the outside, the anterior part of my elbow, and it seems to originate in the in the bone itself, but it radiates down my forearm, and uh, it makes gripping anything especially hard. Uh, and I was wondering if I could uh, wear something like a compression sleeve or. Anything that you would how, like how, long, how, long, how, long, how long ago did it start? You know, it's it, it's it used to just flare up every now and then, but now it's been a constant thing for like two weeks, and it's been getting worse and worse. What have you done about it? Uh, I got a compression, uh, like a brace for it, but it's not doing anything. Okay, so the the problem is is that it's coming from someplace else. It's affecting the mechanics of the elbow. Uh, you have nerves that run down into your hands and your fingers that start actually up into your neck. So from your neck to your shoulder to your arm, your elbows into your fingers. And so if you have to find out again where it's stemming from. So now what you probably have is just from normal use, you've off-centered the position of the elbow in a way that is allowing that constant irritation to occur and just supporting it is not going to help. So you're going to have to have somebody who can actually, you know, go through, examine the elbow, and it's probably just a mechanical fix uh, somewhere along that chain, from the neck to the shoulder, the elbow to the hand. You fix that, the elbow pain goes away. Treating the elbow by itself is not going to be enough based on what you're telling me, because if the a compression uh, sleeve doesn't help you, it doesn't relieve the pain in any way, then the mechanics are off. And it's that thing that we were talking about a minute ago, that, that kinematic chain, that reactive muscle pattern that was identified by those two guys that we just talked about, and Crotty and, and Bronson. And if, you can, if they can find that and fix the source of it, then your elbow clears up and it goes away completely. But you got to do that first. So, I mean, any kind of elbow brace will protect it perhaps from getting worse, but it's not going to resolve the problem. The reason that you have it further down in the forearm now is because the muscle chain is being affected and subsequently the nerves are being affected, but you got to get to the source. And if you feel it in the elbow, it can be the biceps and the triceps, the front, you know, the, the muscles of flexion and extension. It can be even further up into the shoulder because they connect even into the chest muscles. And those muscles are run by the nerves that come from your neck. So all of this could have started by a little bit of an injury, uh, something that happened to your neck. It could have been one from sleeping in a bad position, or you could have taken a blow or a small car accident. It seems something that you didn't think was a big deal at the time, but then showed up with this presentation, this chain. So hope that helps you a little bit. If I can be a further help, always you can get a hold of us at the office at any time at roselcare.com. Uh, Roselle uh, one of the guys will get back to you and talk to you privately. Or if you not, uh, if you don't have a computer, obviously 703-698-7117. Our number here is 888-630-9625. Talking about pain patterns and why they come, you know, an elbow problem like that there's this this reactive muscle pattern and, and it can also develop in something called a strain counter strain uh, situation what that really means is that you have a flexion muscle the biceps and you have an extension muscle the triceps that are now working against each other instead of in cooperation to each other okay so that's uh, a, a big problem and you have to reset them you have to normalize them sometimes it's because there's not enough enzyme called phosphatase that the body will burn up in a lot of different ways. Sometimes it's because the muscle goes in, uh, is, is shocked into tightness or shocked the opposite muscle shocked into weakness. And by the way, a muscle that's too tight, 80% of the time, it's the opposite muscle that's causing the tightness. The other muscle is too weak. 20% of the time, it's actually a spasm. But you, can, you need to find out the mechanics of it. You need to find out the chemistry of it. But that's something that if, uh, if I was to, uh, working on that elbow, uh, I'm going to go someplace besides that elbow. And I might even actually with the elbow, I may go to the opposite knee because your mechanics as you're walking, your left knee, your right elbow and so forth work in tandem to each other. So you could actually have a problem. And that's uh, something called a ligament interlink. It's interlinking the two connecting similar areas. Let's go back to the phones. Helen. Thank you for calling. How can I help you? Hello, Hi, Helen. Hi, Dr. Rizzo. Hi, yes. I'm sorry. I'm... 
Are you there? Hi, is this Dr. Rizal? Yes, ma'am. Oh, hi. Sorry about that. Um, I have a 16-year-old daughter. Um, she was diagnosed with hypothyroidism in June of 2018, um, secondary to Hashimoto's disease. And we seem to have her levels worked out to where her blood work is normal, but yet she's still symptomatic. She has um, joint pain, um, just overall weakness, fatigue. Okay. That means anytime she, she's a soccer player, anytime she does any um, yeah, strenuous that, exercise. It still means she's hypothyroid. So what's happening, unfortunately, the laboratory normals are not normal. They're, they've widened the parameters over a period of years. So I'll give you a quick example because I don't have your, your daughter's lab work in front of me. So uh, TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, the laboratory normals sometimes are like, they go down to 0.57 uh, depending on the lab and, and it goes up to 4.5. What functional medicine recognizes as normal is about 1.75 up to about 2.25. So if it's not in that bracket, it tells you that there's something wrong. Same thing with T4 thyroxine or T3 triiodine. And the, uh, if they're not there, and then you have to know how much of it actually is getting into the system, how much is actually going into the receptor. That's called uptake. But if the TPO levels are still elevated... The uh, you know thyroid peroxidase uh, antibodies are still elevated. It's not normal. It can never be normal because there's going to be an inflammatory reaction that's going to go on. So you look at that piece, and and I'm going to quote from uh, somebody by, that I have tremendous respect for. His name is Datis Kazarian. Uh, Dr. Kazarian wrote a book simply called Thyroid, and he goes on to say that anybody that is a Hashimoto's thyroiditis patient, if you eat any grain whatsoever you will be a Hashimoto's patient, period. You have to eliminate grain 100% to, to get those numbers to come back down. And then you have to make sure that you deal with the inflammatory reaction so whatever hormone now is available can actually be transported into the tissue so the receptor sites work the way they're supposed to. If I can help you, uh, you know, walk through this, uh, give the office a call. You can ask for one of my docs, send us a note. Uh, but that's where the problem is. And she's, she, we have to look at there's something called an HPA axis uh, that has to do with hypothalamus pituitary uh, and adrenal. I'm going to talk about that when I come back from the break. Ah, what questions? We'll be right back. Don't go away. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live as you do, you know, Saturday or Sunday. It depends on football season or not. So Redskins are here. So we're on Saturdays at 4 o'clock. And we will be till football season is over. And then more than likely, we're going to go back to Sundays at high noon. You know, we don't know how you do it, but there's so many of our men and women in the armed forces that find us, and we get emails from you. And first, you know, thank you so very much for all the things that you do for us. And we try our best to make sure that we answer your questions as promptly as that we possibly can. And uh, whether you're listening you know, live on the show today or you catch us on Roselle Radio or posted on WMAL or on our website at rosellecare.com, uh, all of our programs are posted and they're there for your listening pleasure. You know, we do these programs for one very specific reason, to educate you. And so you know more in many cases, than the doctors that you see now. And if you go to uh, the web and you can look up my book, it's called Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. I wrote it for my patients, I think it's about five years ago now, and maybe it's six. And the reason that I wrote it was to give you a very straightforward, easy to understand pathway to know what's going on with your health. You know, we've had several questions today that are right on the mark. And the last caller with a uh, daughter uh, who has Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an autoimmune condition, and it produces a problem of low-functioning thyroid. It increases the inflammation in the system to a place where you can't transport the hormone. So the body starts producing less of the hormone because it can't get it in. So it's like, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it type of situation. I mentioned there was this other piece called HPA axis, and it's called hypothalamus pituitary adrenal. Now, that's important because that mechanism is what stimulates the uh, pituitary to release thyroid stimulating hormone. So if the body is fatigued, if it's putting out fires, if it's stressed 
beyond you know recognition, if there's been a lot of emotional injury, that HPA axis will not work properly. And subsequently, the pituitary is not going to work. But not only is the TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, not going to work the way it's supposed to, but also other triggering hormones like luteinizing hormone, which triggers the ovaries to release the uh, the egg if a woman is going is in normal uh, ovulation. Um, there's the luteinizing hormone also, guys, by the way, triggers uh, production of testosterone by producing sperm within the, the testicles. So we're talking about a multidimensional piece here that has to be respected, but we sometimes are on our, 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 our own worst enemies. So those, all these things can be cleared up, but in today's world, grains are a bugaboo. You, know, you listen to some authors, they say, go out and eat as many grains as you want. Well, not so much. Even if they were decent for you and you could find the right ones, they're so genetically modified. But in addition to that, they have all kinds of halides around them, which are called bromines and so forth. Our water supply has chlorine and fluoride, which is another halide which blocks, and when that's important, it blocks the ability of the thyroid to work properly. And we could get into that. Actually, we could spend another whole program, my just talking about that. But we're here available to you, our practice. And uh, Edward is on the, uh, the phone holding right now. I can't get to him. But our practice is in Virginia. If we can be of help in any way whatsoever, you're welcome to attend our in-house programs. They're there for you. Look them up. Go to rosellecare.com. Check it out. And use us as a source of information. We're happy to do that for you. That's why we do what we do. We're coming up to the break. We'll be here next week. We'll see you then. Love you all. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health Is, a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step -step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is, a do-it-yourself program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com. Thank you. 
Thank you.